How exciting! I noticed that uh, I saw the change in your voice. You, you heard that, right? Oh, Jesus, I, I can spot a pro a mile away. We came alive, and welcome to the show. Thanks for being here and spending some time with us all. And uh, most recently, you made headlines, of course, with your "Epstein didn't kill himself" coin, that was inspired by countless memes. John, it's always an honor and pleasure to finally get a chance to talk to you here. Well, it's great to talk to you, too. As I said, I can tell I'm talking to a, a real pro. So this will be, I promise you, fun. Oh, with a man like yourself, John, it's always going to be fun. Your life is like a movie, and I believe there is going to be a movie uh, after you pretty soon here, John. Yeah, that, that's the second one. The first one I was not fond of. That was Gringo put out by, um, well, it's on, you can get it on Netflix if you guys want to search it and spend the time um that came out a couple of years ago this one is this one is a uh, comedy king of the jungle based on three or two and a half weeks of my life uh in belize uh, when a fired reporter came down to um uh, to interview me for a, a week-long assignment and which went on for two and a half weeks and at the end he just totally unraveled the poor bastard they went back and wrote a book called um, John Mackey's Last Stand. You get that on Amazon. Don't recommend it. Um, and um, so they're making the movie uh, based on that book that he wrote, that, that two and a half weeks he spent with me. That must have been a fun two weeks. But, you know, listen, I consider Wired Magazine, which is who sent the reporters out there, to be mainstream media and therefore fair fucking game. Um, the second day, I gave him a day, I gave him a chance. Are you a real mensch? Are you really here? Are you, are you really a person? There's someone underneath this uh, newsman uh, persona? Well, there wasn't. It was just the newsman. So on the uh, second day, we're sitting in the dining room table. And this is in San Pedro on the beach. And we're just chatting about general things in Belize. And while we're chatting, I pull out my uh, uh, revolver. Um, 357. I open, then while I'm still talking, I'm not even looking at the gun. I open it, I, I drop all the bullets on the table. Okay. And he's looking at the gun, but I'm just talking normally about the same old subject. I reach over, I, I pull one out, I put, put it back in the cylinder. So there's one bullet in here. I spin it while I'm still talking to him, close it. And while still talking to him, put the gun to my head and pull the trigger. Now, if you buy that book, that ebook, the cover is me with a gun to my head, uh, because that was the central theme of this. Like McAfee is crazy. Now, not only did, and he just jumped up. What? So I, I opened the cylinder, spun it again, put it in my head, and pulled the trigger again. Any sane fucking person would know. Well, this is some really clever sleight of hand, which of right. course it is. However. He never caught on to that, and I never told him after. Um, so he, and by the way, I must have done it 30 times. At the end, he, he kept on backing off till he was against the wall 30 feet away uh, on the other side of the room, screaming, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. Um, he, he just thought that whole fucking thing was real. And the, oh, also, to make it even more real, uh, I, 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 I took the gun. I said, come with me outside. And he, you know, he, he was maybe 20 feet behind me. I said, watch this. Um, Josh, that was his name, Josh, pulled the trigger, and it went boom, sand flying everywhere. I, I'm a, I'm a, a part-time um, slot and magician. I love, I love to just entertain people. I also fuck people when I have to. <laughs> that was the second day. 
it got worse from there, I promise you. And he had totally unraveled, in my mind, and everybody around him who was watching him, the name of Josh Davis. Um, and, and when he left, it was just a, a bundle of goo. So anyway, so he wrote that book, and that's what this movie's about. I, I want to see this one because they've turned it into a comedy, which for me, it was. I mean, a comedy of the highest order. I'm sorry, you just asked me about the movie, and I spent 15 minutes. I'll shut up. No, that's so okay. Question. No, that's fine. I, I, wanted to hear, <laughs> I wanted to hear your opinion. No, no worries. I would like that. I'm glad you are clarifying some things for me. And of course, John, I must say, you've lived a pretty extraordinary life, my friend. You've lived more lives than most of the listeners, I have to say. Well, I tell you, I think Janice will agree. In the past six months, we probably lived more lives uh, than we've ever dreamed of. I mean, the, the shit that happened to us for, since January the 22nd of this year has been pretty phenomenal. Our, the last gig was we got out of the Dominican Republic jail uh, after trying to be, they, they tried to deport us back to America, went to England, and at this point, we both said, end it, meaning we, we went silent. No one knows where we are, we're in a Faraday, we, when we communicate, we communicate from the Faraday case, which is where I am now. Uh, if you saw it, you would be horrified. The, uh, it does not look good, but it works. Um, and uh, we haven't even told our family or our best friends where we are. Yeah, and that's... Um, we go from total, total, you know, la di da uh, in December until this now has been quite a thing. We've been chased around the Caribbean. We were thrown out of Cuba. A Cuban general, we, after we'd been there for a month and a half, um, some soldiers came and said, you will be at this place tomorrow at 2.30 in the afternoon. There was an address, you and your wife. Janice and I went, a Cuban general came in, said, um, the United States has requested that we return you to America. Um, but, and this is, thank God, this is during that little crisis about uh, six months ago, said, uh, we're disinclined to do that. Um, we want you, sir, to leave our country within 72 hours and never come back. Um, oh. now, 72 hours sounds like a lot, but it's not. When we have to get a big ass boat prepared. Yeah, when you got to move. We got to move. Yeah. So when we did move, I'm thinking, where the fuck am I going to go? I thought the best place has got to be a Spanish speaking country in the Caribbean because it's only Spanish or English, or if you want to tolerate Haiti, French. Um, so I chose the Dominican Republic, four and a half days a sail away. When we came into port, we were surrounded by special forces not allowed to talk to immigration or customs, and charged with bringing weapons into the country without declaring them. They never let me try. I said, hey, they were, and the weapons were out on the table, ready for inspection. Like in all countries, if you got a boat, everybody carries guns on fucking boats. There are pirates out there. So in any case, four days later, we get out of jail. They say, Miss Mack, we're returning to America. I said, I didn't come from America. International law says, if you are to deport me, i got to go back to the place I came from, which right. is Cuba. Right? Even though Cuba would not accept me. I'm sure, well, they may accept me into jail. So in any case, but I, in that four days, I hired a couple of lawyers. Um, and this is a long story, so I'll just cut it short. Anyway, they sent us, they sent us to, um, uh, to England, which is what I asked originally. And that's when we disappeared. Now, the time between talking to immigration and, and reaching England was an adventure of the highest fucking order. Right. You guys want to hear? Janice can help me on this one. By the way, speaking of Janice, I want to thank her right now for setting this up. She's a lovely woman. And, John, you are a lucky man. Hello? Hello, hello. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Did, did yeah, I lose you? you. Oh. The lovely woman is sitting right here. Yes. If you say hi to her. Hello. Hi, Janice. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. I was just putting you over. Uh, oh, thank you. If you guys want to seriously be entertained, you should hear Janice's story about the, from the moment we were in immigration, and immigration says we're sending you back to America. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and four hours later, what, four hours later, when we're at the airport on our way to London, this is the story of stories. I want to talk to you about this, Janice. Story. By, so, okay. by the way, Janice, I have to stop you right now. Now that I do have you here on uh, the line in front of all of us here, 
Uh, Janice, when you, when you first laid eyes upon John, did you fall in love? What happened there? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta know. <laughs> what what century? Funny. What century are you living? In? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people no longer mate or get together for extended periods for love, for fuck's sake. It's for convenience or power. This woman is my opposite. So good God. And it costs me dearly to keep her. That's a different story. But yes. in all seriousness, you, you want to hear the story, I think, <laughs> from immigration. I do, yes. London. I'm but that's serious. it. But that's it. No, no, I did not immediately fall head over heels <laughs> in love <laughs> with the Johnny man. No, no. no slow mo. Okay. I get it. She did not even know no who I was. Okay. No, I so <laughs> I met her. Okay. The, after my month and a half in the Guatemalan jail a few years back, and they deported me back to Miami. Um, listen, I've been in a Guatemalan jail for a while. And I, I, I had more pussy than God in jail. I mean, oh this goodness. is how it works with her. You know, you got, you got $12, you can have a woman all night. So anyway, uh, and that's all I had to do because I didn't speak Spanish well enough to understand television or carry on a fucking conversation. And that's all it was. Eat, sleep, watch TV, carry on a conversation, or fuck. So this is this is the the night that I got back in Miami from Guatemala. Uh, get down to South Beach, the hotel I always stay at. I just want a good fucking cup of coffee because I'm in Guatemala, the best coffee producers in the world, and they served us instant Maxwell shit. Mm. Cheap. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm out walking down the street. Uh, I see Janice and another Janice at this point was was a working girl. Yes. And, and Janice and one of her girl buddies walking by, and I just I couldn't help but look bad because in the, in the corner of my eye I thought I noticed the finest ass I'd ever seen. So I turned around. <laughs> She's turning around looking at me, but she sized me up instantly as that bastard doesn't have a dime and walked on, <laughs> right? <laughs> Has Janice ever tried to kill you, by the way, John? Pretty much. Yes. I'm sorry? Has, has Janice ever tried to assassinate you at any time? Not personally, but she has hit gangs in our attic. Uh, planning on them coming down and kidnapping me that that much. Oh shit! Multiple times, right? Multiple times. She uh, she was w was about to poison me six months after we first left on behalf of some man, people yes. who were going to pay her handsomely to do so. That's heavy duty. Uh, pardon? I said that's heavy yeah. duty. Yeah. You get upset at trivialities like this in life. Then you know, I mean, because nothing. Off. He doesn't understand that. Okay, it, wasn't, right. it wasn't that simple. It wasn't that simple. I wasn't paid the money. My pimp was, and so it was a situation where my family was threatened, and I did what I had, what I thought was the best thing I could do to keep my children safe because I didn't know John, you know, and I didn't know if he would, you know, protect me. Like I didn't know if I could share that information with him and it not backfire or come back on me in some way. Um, so that that was a situation. Yeah, but when I say trivial stuff, what I mean, people, and I really mean trivial, is would you rather? Because listen, I knew who Janice was. I'm no fucking sure. Um, I knew for the entire time for the first few years she was still with her pimp. Of course, duh. She's been working girl for ten years with one pimp. Sure, she's not going to abandon his ass for some white dude who's a hundred and ten years old. Now there's some loyalty <laughs> there. So. Um, so in any case, so we're we're walking by because let's not get into the times she tried to you know. But I've never been with a woman who has all tried to kill me. So well, it's well John, here. yeah, John. The only reason why I brought it up is because after doing some reading and researching on you for many many years now, I've always noticed that there have been many attempts on your life, and one of my biggest worries, John, is waking up with a knife held up to my throat from the woman I'm next to. Oh, that's happened to me. That shit's yeah. scary. Well, no, it, they never actually slash your fucking throats. Okay, they're oh, they're they're angry because you you smiled at some Spanish <laughs> girl, you know, at the restaurant counter or something. I, I I don't know. In any case, get, getting back. To yes, carry on. Sorry about so that. Five stories away from now, though. Let's back up two stories and get to the night that Janice and I met. Let's do this. You did ask specifically that question, so we should favor what you want. Yes, sir. Uh, in any case, so I, I look back, she looked back, I, I, I could tell immediately 
I, I could get that, but it's going to cost me five times normally because she just ain't interested. And I didn't want it in any case. I just looked at the ass as something like, well, God damn, is that not special? <laughs> Amazing. So you know, it's really, uh, sex was the last thing on my mind. I mean, I was worn raw from that Guatemalan prison. So anyway, um, from the women who were there, just to make sure we all understand. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> so I I go to the co- my favorite coffee shop in South Beach, the, the bookstore cafe. The news cafe. The news cafe, right. I order a cup of fucking real coffee, and just as it's being served, here comes Janice and her friends, right? Score. So in the meantime, you tell him what it is. Okay, so... Here we um, go. Okay, so after we passed each other, I got to his hotel. I didn't know it was his hotel, but um, when I got there, the security, the nighttime security guard came out, and he was just telling us about the night, about the police, if they were out and things. And so he said, well, you know who that is down there that you just passed. He's like, that's John McAfee. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? Right. And so he's like, well, do you know the McAfee antivirus? And he said, well, that's the creator of it. I was like, oh, really? So it's like, come on, girl, let's go back. <laughs> so we <laughs> jogged back a little bit because I didn't see him anymore. I'm like, fuck, we lost him. But then I saw him in front of the the News coffee cafe. shop. So we slowed down. I gathered myself and put on my best walk. And <laughs> and I just I walked over and asked him for a cigarette. And while he was lighting my cigarette, he asked me if we were – I said, because I, I, yeah. I, I knew exactly who these two girls were. So as I'm lighting her cigarette, I very politely say, are, are you girls out uh, drugging and rolling old men tonight? And, and I goes, said, <laughs> no, we don't use drugs. <laughs> <laughs> very PC there. Which actually, which actually takes a lot more talent. So immediately, I'm going, my, her, her estimation in my mind went way up. Oh, so you roll old men without drugs. Okay. <laughs> so Even more dangerous. Yeah. Then she made a sexual suggestion. Yes, a few. A few, which just I to, just which to I, get it out of the way. <laughs> which I absolutely declined. Which I knew he would. Right, I, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk to these two girls. Listen, I was no. in a fucking prison. No, I didn't. wanted. I wanted to watch people walk by on the street in South Beach, and I got to talk to these two hookers. Well, good but God listen, Almighty! You know, and he did make that very known that he was not interested in having conversation at all. But then he invited us to sit down. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't leave. I mean, you, eventually, it's, it, even the crudest he person didn't ask has me a. To leave. No, I, I would not. Have. Are you glad that I didn't? Of course. Duh. Okay, then. So I mean, the problem. This, this is one of, the, one of the major fulcrums of my life. <laughs> John, are you still having... I knew, uh, she did not, I knew she did not know who I was. Right. Because she did not, when she arrived, kneel down and beg me to fuck her on the spot for free. Amazing. You know? <laughs> so I go, God damn, she didn't know who I am. So. <laughs> and John, are you still partaking in a lot of freaky sex with Janice included nowadays? My friend, I mean, it's up to this point, we've had the most gentlemanly and polite conversation. But what Janice and I do or do not do in the bed is nobody's fucking business. But oh, amazing. Just... You're here. Well, I had to I, ask. Second. I had to, I had to please the heathens out there. Indeed. <laughs> because, you know, John, you're, you're kind of known as a scat man. And I just want to bring that to your attention. Oh, well, that's fine. And what I'm known as is of no interest to me whatsoever. It's what I am that matters to me. And then nobody knows who I am except for me. I like that. No di- and I'm no different than anybody on this world. Nobody knows who you are, my friend, except you. Well, that's very true. And some of the listeners do know some of my exploits uh, very, very much now. Lots of choking, lots of uh, tossing around in bedrooms, yes. Yeah, after this is over, why don't you text all those to Janice? Because I'm keeping a database of people <laughs> <laughs> just in case hard times come. So, <laughs> uh, well, don't worry. I'll, I will leave you with my information. Don't worry about that. We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no slow motion. Janice didn't fall head over heels as soon as she saw you. Nothing of that nature. Um, no. That's what we, uh, that's where we're at right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, listen. It's been 50 years since I even could recollect what falling head over heels actually felt like. I, I can't like, either. I, I, it just sounds nice, but I don't believe that shit either. <laughs> does, no, no, not, it does not sound nice. I mean, what you're talking about, and instead of saying falling head over heels, is why don't you wrap your entire head with a veil 
and then look at the world through that veil because that's what that is, my friend. Absolutely. You're not going to get an argument from me on that one. And John, I have to say, you have a great sense of humor. I've always known that about you. And I'm wondering right now, John, were you always like a, a humorous sort of free soul type of guy? Um, I'm wondering, since you bounced around from the corporate world uh, extensively, I'm wondering if you were always this straight and narrow sort of guy, or was there a moment when you just broke out of all that shit? I don't think I was ever a straight and narrow guy, not, not since I was seven years old and realized I'm going to have to live with my parents, Oof. my teachers teachers, adults, people twice my size for what? Another 10 fucking years? Then I developed a sense of humor. I mean, how else can a child survive such a, um, uh, an epiphany? Because for me, it was an epiphany. I don't know what it was. It's kind of like, it, you know, at some point in your childhood, you know, you go from being a real child, which is there's nothing but play. Life is play and not play. Not play is when you're stuck in the house, uh, play is when you're outside with the kids playing, or maybe they don't do that anymore now that we do have social media. But, um, but I changed from that into a person going, fuck me, life is not exactly fun all the time. No. And, but you can make it fun all the time, I promise you, by having a sense of humor. Janice, you, you heard me. Okay, so... The night we were locked up in the Dominican Republic, and these jails, by the way, would not recommend for those of you looking for a jail experience because it's um, it, it's just not up there enough to talk about. So we're in this jail, and Janice is in the, the woman's block next door. Now, when we say block, these are outdoor buildings, no windows, rusted steel windows. And so I'm in there with, with four or five of my people, okay? and we're, you know, they're all going, God, what's going to happen? And so I'm, I'm just laughing. Okay, so the first thing I, I noticed, we were in, we're, we got thrown in. It's, it's nighttime, but there's dim, dim light coming in from outside. And um, so uh, one, of, one of my people, Coolio, he's a Haitian guy, been in security and sort of jack of all trades. So, and it's desperately hot. We're all undressing. Coolio takes his pants off, but he's, he's got these shorts on, not with Mickey Mouse, but some equivalent thing on. And so I go, you know, damn cool, you know, I, I've, I've really never noticed you much before, but I, I, I want to tell you now that in those briefs, you look kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> and from that moment on, we laughed all fucking night. I know you heard us. Yes, little. I did hear you. Janice in the next block, I, everybody heard us for half a mile around. I was just rolling on the fucking floor. No, see, if you can find a laugh of humor in anything, a Dominican Republic jail, then I fucking promise you, you can find humor in every moment of your life. Absolutely. You know, I say this Thanks. on the show and to everyone I know, if you lack a sense of humor, you're going to have a terrible life. A duh. <laughs> you have a and you fucked up it, life. All the time. I don't know why it is that such people gravitate to positions that we have to, we have to fucking see them and interface. Things like security guards or oh no tsa the people who scan you down at the tsa good people example who are past, in the passport control line have you ever seen one of those motherfuckers smile no <laughs> i think that they're watched on camera and if even a smirk comes on their face they're carted off to an asylum of some kind because they're terrified to smile That's and true. they do not understand any kind of humor whatsoever um I mean, I, trust me, I've, I've tried. I would not recommend trying humor with passport control. I've tried twice, failed both times. And John, by the way, I got to ask you this next one here. As you were sort of in your younger years, did you always know that the official government narrative that they often give us is not exactly the most accurate portrayal of <laughs> the truth? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, uh, that's a... Um, a less than forceful way of telling the truth. Yes, absolutely. Good God Almighty. I don't see anything real. Do you? Not at all. The first question we should ask is this. What motivates our media when they choose issues? Because if you read every newspaper in America, you're not going to find more than 30 issues. I promise you. War in the Middle East, politics, uh, Trump, 
impeachment, Trump and impeachment. I don't think I can name 30. I mean, it's 30 on a busy week. Now, all the issues in this world of 5 billion people, of incredible things, do we, as the media, choose this, that, or the other. This is how we are controlled, people, by the choice of information that we are given. And when we start believing this information, then we become susceptible to the lies along with the selective truth. Because if you selectively choose things, let's say I want to, you know, I want, I'm going to promote gun ownership. Well, fuck me. I'm going to, I promise you, if I search around America, I can find all kinds of stories where, oh, this is a grandmother. Yes, they were trying to rob me, and there were five of them. They were trying to gangbang me, and I just shot them all. Right? I mean, that's easy. I can find that lady right. or something simpler. I can probably get a hundred or a thousand of these stories. Now, if I am a news agency and this is my agenda, I promise you I'll have America packing weapons from three-year-olds to people just barely in the grave. This is how we're controlled. And when we reach the point that we believe what they're saying, because what they're saying is true, yes, they're not lying to us, not now, at least not in the beginning. Then comes deception. Then comes true power. Now, who has the true power in America? I promise you it is not our president, nor is it our Congress. The true power in America is the CIA. And before you go conspiracy theorist, let me ask you a simple question. Do you pay attention to the truth even from the media and connect the dots? Let's say I'm the CIA, and just before the Gulf War, Iraq is getting too much power, and it's not in our interest as the CIA for this to happen. We need to neutralize that motherfucker and his country. What's the easiest way? So you get in a room, and the CIA is going, what are we going to do? How are we going to arrange this one? Uh, so someone goes, you know what? We don't have enough truth that we can manipulate right now to force Bush to bomb Iraq starting tomorrow. So we're going to have to go to our deception team. Deception team goes, oh, fuck me. This is simple. Just tell them they got nukes. You're right. Go, oh, great. That's great, George. You've got a raise. Now, they go to Bush. Uh, Mr. President, we have with 100% certainty information that Iraq has both weapons of mass destruction and New, not, and missiles capable of delivering these warheads to our closest ally, England. Mr. Bush, we cannot advise you. We are the CIA. But, sir, this is probably the gravest decision that you will have to make in your presidency. Oh, Bush. And then they, they knew exactly how he would react because they psychologically profile everybody. What did Bush do? Bombs Iraq into the Stone Age. Were there weapons of mass destruction? No, of course not. I knew it. Everybody knew it except the government highest echelon. The president believed there were weapons of mass destruction. Congress believed it. Why? Because the CIA briefs and controls every fucking one of them. Now, if you, if you can't dig a little into the events that have happened in our past 10 or 12 years and find a common thread of CIA interests and CIA actions, then you're just not doing, you know, digging deep enough. And we were warned about the CIA by Dwight Eisenhower, who said the CIA and the military industrial complex represent the gravest threat to the freedom of Americans. And what happened? Nobody tested the CIA up until John F. Kennedy, who I'm going to just, I'm going to littleize this agency and take it apart. Well, that poor bastard unluckily got shot. Nobody ever since has challenged the CIA. So we spend all of our time people worrying about personalities, Trump versus Clinton versus, it doesn't matter. Have you ever seen or felt a change of presidency that affected you really in any way? Did you lose friends, not drink as much beer, smoke as much weed, not get as much nuki? Did your wife not kiss you as often? Did, did your boss give you a demotion? No, nothing fucking changes people in your life. We're in a system. That's right. 
car with a broken steering wheel. It doesn't matter people who's driving. The system's going where it's going. Yes, and this system is quite broken. Everyone can see that by now. And you mentioned you mentioned the Iraq war, and that leads me to 9-11 and the Building 7. What are, what, what are your thoughts on 9-11 and Building 7 in particularly? I have insufficient information to give you a judgment. Um, in all likelihood, this was a false flag. Why? Because, listen, the CIA was my first customer and when I started McAfee. I was the only security company that was worth anything in the world. And, of course, the government was 90% of my business for an entire year. Um, and I know people within the CIA, and I talk to people within the CIA even now. Um, if you think the CIA is not willing to sacrifice a few Americans in order to further an agenda, which, which, by the way, the CIA truly believes is in the national interest, then please, God, just use your heads. And these aren't people who are evil. They're patriots. I truly believe it. They're simply misguided. They view politicians like presidents and congressmen. They have a word for them. I first learned this word back in 1990. Transients. That's what the CIA calls presidents and congressmen transients. Why? Prison's only there for four years, eight max if he's lucky. These CIA people are lifetime. You never quit the CIA, you never retire. I mean, you might get whacked by them, but no, it's a lifetime job. And in that lifetime, in the first 20 years of your experience, you have learned a great deal about the nuances and subtleties of international relations, political alliances, cultures, languages, religions, histories, and it took you forever to learn that. And you have a president here, and you're supposed to, what, in, in, in teach him what it took you 20 years to learn? It can't be done, people. Right. This is the absolute truth. You're right on this, on this aspect, of course. Of course, presidents in this complex world of ours can no longer do what they were supposed to do 200 years ago when international relations was a rare topic. Why? It took you three months to get to another nation. <laughs> so, um, no. And so they, they rightly view these transients as incapable of deciding for themselves, and maybe they are. And so that's why they manipulate them. Nevertheless, we did not vote the CIA into the totalitarian government that they have created, people. Now, it does not matter that maybe presidents do not know enough to be presidents anymore. And maybe maybe we should start electing CIA people presidents. But we need to curb this monstrosity. It's not just in America. The CIA rules the world. They have been chasing Janice and I since January of this year, which is why we're in a fucking Faraday cage. So our signals can't be detected from anywhere. We don't carry telephones with us anymore. We don't have smartphones. Carry no electronics with us anywhere outside this room. That's the only way to hide from the CIA. Poor bastards have lost the, the, art, the art of tradecraft where people on the ground could sniff out a mole 10 miles away. So no, I'm safe for now, but is anybody else? Yeah, that's what, what about I'm the rest? About. What about yeah. the rest of them? And what about the rest of us indeed? And of course, McAfee2020.com. Freedom for the people is your only goal, you say, on your website. Yes. Why? <clears throat> because I'm a selfish motherfucker. And a world full of sheep and slaves is, number one, boring as shit. Not creative and not pleasant. I want, I want to hang out with people who are themselves. Because that's what freedom means. Freedom to be you. Freedom to, to wake up on Monday and go, you know what? I just noticed. I'm not anxious to get to my work. I'm not running to the car so I can get there, so I can get to my desk, and oh, God, do I want to work. And that occurs to you, and you go, is this really what I want? And the free man goes, no, get real, you asshole. And you quit without, without fear, without going, oh, my God, if I quit, who's going to pay the rent? Who's going to? You don't, you don't know, but nothing bad will happen to you, I promise. Your life is going to change. But, but that's all, folks. That's all. Now, I'm curious about your opinion on this one. There's been several individuals who have said this sort of thing. The call for an open source government, you've heard that echoed 
uh, many, many times before. And America, in my opinion, isn't ready for truth and reality, it appears. I think all of these politicians are compromised. I think the whole thing is, is compromised, John, and you know that. Oh, yeah, I know that. But, but listen, okay, people go, what's the plan? What's the plan? I don't have a fucking plan for you other than waking everybody up. I mean, if you're in a crowded movie theater and you notice a fire in the back, is the first thing you do, get out your paper and go, I need a plan. Or the first thing, or, no, fuck no, you act on the instant. And when the human consciousness of a collective of people, a nation, reaches critical mass, and it does not take many people, 5%, maybe 10, reaches that critical mass that they all see the truth, then I promise you that truth will set everybody free. Just those 5% who wake up, see the reality, see the self-deception that you have created around you, built from the problem, from the, the mass media, our government's propaganda, the, and your own weird, improbable, and impractical wishes and hopes and dreams. You see all that for what they are. Then, fuck it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I promise you it won't be bad. It won't be bad, people. Well, John, I have to say, if you ever do run for president, I for sure would vote for you without hesitation. And that brings me to a... What, what, go some, ahead. People say, some people say that, but I don't want the job. And please, and, and let's all get real. I mean, anybody who has read more than three sentences about me knows I can never be president. <laughs> God, That's a fun well. thought, though. <laughs> I love it. Not for me. I wouldn't. God, what a You would hate it, though. Yeah. Oh, I would hate it. Yeah, you, you wouldn't like that shit. And, but regardless, I would support you. But another gentleman has shown interest. That man is Jesse Ventura. What exactly are your thoughts and opinions on one Jesse Ventura? Well, I tell you what, I do not normally talk personalities. People ask about Trump. I've never met the man, never had dinner with him, never had a private conversation. I don't know shit about him. Ask me another question. However, Jesse Ventura, God, yeah, I, I would vote for him. I would. I'd vote for Jesse Ventura. I'd vote, you know, I would not vote for anybody who is currently in power in Washington under any circumstances. Absolutely. And if, you, if you would all heed that advice, America would change instantly, overnight, and we could all breathe a sigh of relief. And I don't care if you elect strictly derelicts from the street, because they will be too out of it to harm us. They will not be able to collectively organize themselves as a corrupt entity that exists today. <laughs> they just don't have the wherewithal. We'd be safe. And it doesn't matter. Have you noticed the government shuts down sometimes for a month at a time? Yeah. How many of you, how many of you starved during that month? No how many of you noticed a single fucking thing different? Nobody. Please, God, people see the truth here. Get those bastards out, every last one. Same shit every day, John. And, uh, you know... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, we're way over time. I've missed another, uh, another one. Oh, that's but true. I've this one, which is why I, I did not shut it off. Don't worry, uh, don't worry. Been, you have been both a gentleman and, uh, and a, um, a friendly conversationalist during this. And if you'd ever like to do this again, please be scheduled with Janice. For sure, John. I do want to thank you for your time and efforts to appear on the program. I really do appreciate that. Send my best regards to Janice. Love her. Love you very much. Respect, both, respect the hell out of both of you guys. Both have balls. Both very outspoken. And I admire the arrogance the the intransigence john I, I love it all well you know you, you mentioned balls i would like to say janice's lady balls yes um, big lady know, balls when, when we need to sweep the floor i just ask you would you please face <laughs> back and forth and <laughs> amazing well, well john bef before I, I cut you off any words of advice to the younger generations coming up seeking for any answer out there what would you say to those younger souls? The only advice I could, I could ever give anyone, which is do only what you like, children. Only what you like and nothing else. If you find yourself for a single minute doing something that you're doing willingly of your own volition, choice, that you're not loving, 
<clears throat> fuck me, choose something else in every aspect of your life. And I don't care how horrific it may seem if you change that. You must change it if you don't love it. You may have fallen in love with your spouse, and maybe five years later, that love is just a dim recollection. And you have found yourself living in a habituated life. Just stop for a second, check in with yourself and say, how do I really feel about this? Do you love it? Then leave it. And that's, I will leave you with that. Thank you so much. Amazing. For Thank you, sir. Have a good night. And Janice too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And there they go. Ladies and gentlemen, that was John McAfee and Janice for a brief moment there. And as we take this home here tonight and pull this Larry Silverstein style, I do want to thank all of you for being a part of this a short special program here. It was quite fun. Thank you to those in the chat room. And don't forget, if you want bonus content of the program, please go to patreon.com forward slash Michael Deacon. And yes, this Saturday, I will return with Michael Cremo. That should be pretty damn fun. Now, well, it would help if I unmuted myself there. I apologize. What I was trying to say was thank you again. And thank you to those who have donated already. That's what I forgot to mention on the last show. I really do appreciate all of you out there who have been so generous. Very kind souls out there. And of course, I'm Michael Deacon. And I hope you enjoyed this short little program. Stay safe, everyone, no matter where you are on this pale blue dot. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place, and life itself is a mystery. Until next time, good night.